ओम भूरधुव स्वह तत्सवितुरवरेण्यम भरो देवशदीमि दियो यो न प्रचोदयात शांति 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 दिस इज वीडियो नंबर सिक्स ऑन भगवान श्री राम नाम है ऋषिज clarification on self inquiry this video starts with three senses of self must be understood jiva atma and parmatma as the ego which is the direct and immediate sense of i is centered and figured in each of the distinct and separate individuals in a subtle moment of life force and mind stuff it is termed jiva here this sense of i is separate in each individual being and preserving the distinctness of the individual behaves in a manner that would strengthen the individual's distinct character but such a moment of the ego or the apparent self has its root and support in something that is the real basis of individuality and that does not move with or lose itself in the moment of the apparent self is something that is a continuous conscious principle related to the past present and future that is the real self signified the lakshyartha in the individual of which the ego is the apparent self this latter is different in different individuals and is loosely called the jivatma but atma the self is really one the self of all individuals as of all existence is one but jivas or living beings are many as many as the individuals are formed these are soul formations that are dissolvable in time unlike their sporting self which is eternal being identical with the infinite eternal which maintains its many centered existence in an endless moment of formation and dissolution thus we see that there are three distinct senses in which i is used the supreme meaning of i its parmartha is the purusha who becomes the lakshyartha the signified sense in the individual as it is the same self that presides over individual existence and the immediate or apparent sense of i vachyartha is the ego or the apparent self formed temporarily for purposes of in individuation threefold then is the sense of the self the i and in its threefold sense it is to be understood at some point god steps in you need not eliminate the wrong eye all that you need do is to find out its origin and abide there you your effort can extend only thus far then the beyond will take care of itself you are helpless there no effort can reach it by repeated practice one can become accustomed to turning inwards 
and finding the self. One must always and constantly make an effort until one has permanently realized. Once the effort ceases, the state becomes natural and supreme takes possession of the person with an unbroken current until at until it has become permanently natural and your habitual state know that you have not realized the self only glimpsed it liberation occurs at a stage of nirvikalpa samadhi called sahaja beyond brahma jnana or kavalya nirvikalpa samadhi the heart is the seat of jnanam as well as of the granthi note of ignorance it is represented in the physical body by a hole smaller than the smallest pinpoint which is always shut when the mind drops down in kavalya nirvikalpa samadhi it opens but shuts again after it when sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi is attained it opens for good he alone is liberated while alive jivan mukta whose wisdom is from the whole called the heart as a small as a pinpoint is always shut being the knot of ignorance which ties the body to consciousness when the mind drops in the temporary kavala nirvikalpa it opens but shuts again in sahaja it remains always open sahaja is also nirvikalpa you are probably meaning kavala nirvikalpa which is temporary while the samadhi last the sahaja nirvikalpa is permanent and in it lies liberation from rebirth as karma alone is responsible for the activity or inactivity of the sages great souls have declared the state of sahaja nirvikalpa the natural state without concepts alone to be the ultimate state ramana maharshi sahaja is the original state so that sadhana amounts to the removal of obstacles for the realization of this abiding truth the i i consciousness one is a prelude to self realization when it becomes permanent sahaja two it is self realization liberation one that is kavala nirvikalpa samadhi two sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi by repeated practice one can become accustomed to turning in words and finding the self one must always and constantly make an effort until one has permanently realized once the effort ceases the state becomes natural and the supreme takes possession of the person with an unbroken current until it has become permanently natural and your habitual state know that you have not realized the self only glimpse it inquire into the nature of that consciousness which knows itself as i and it will inevitably lead you to its source the heart where you will unmistakably 
perceive the distinction between the insentient body and the mind. The latter will then appear in its utter purity as the ever-present self-supporting intelligence which creates, pervades its creation as well as remains beyond it unaffected and uncontaminated. Also, finding the heart will be experienced as being the heart. When this experience becomes permanent through constant practice, the much desired self-realization or mukti is said at long last to have been achieved. The I am the body illusion has broken forever. Vasanas which do not obstruct self-realization remain after self-realization. In Yoga Vasishta, two classes of Vasanas are distinguished, those of enjoyment and those of bondage. Former remain even after Mukti is attained, but the latter are destroyed by it. Attachment is the cause of binding Vasanas, but enjoyment without attachment does not bind and continues even in Sahaja. The state beyond bliss is the state of unceasing peace of mind, which is found in the state of absolute quiescence. Jagrat Susupti Sleep with awareness which resembles inactive deep sleep. In this state, in spite of the activity of the body and the senses, there is no external awareness. Like a child emerged in sleep, who is not conscious of the food given to him by his mother. A yogi who is in this state is inactive even while engaged in activity. This is also called Sahaja Nirvikalpa Samadhi. Natural state of absorption in oneself without concepts. And this is the Nishtha. The settled state in the supreme reality, in the one substance, sport and basis of the worshipper and the worshipped, in which is realized the identity of self with Brahma. In this verse, truth perception is described to be the highest poise of the self. In a subsequent verse, the 23rd self perception or god realization is said to consist in the jiva or soul becoming food that is object of enjoyment or experience to the lord so we have two descriptions of the one exalted state sat darshan and atam darshan truth perception and self realization Similarly, in the two invocatory verses commencing the work, this Supreme Brahma was described to be both impersonal and personal. Impersonal for purposes of Kavalya Nishtha, the soul supreme poise and personal for Sayuja, Sayuja, conscious union of the soul with Brahma. Thus, we are reminded that the two aspects are presented for the two distinct paths of knowledge and devotion that ultimately culminate in a supreme realization which in view of the oneness of the being in the Jiva as well as in the Iswara is mentioned as Sat Darshan Nishtha and in the view of the jiva's relation in world existence to Ishwara is named Atam Darshan, Sayujya. On the question of attaining self-realization, 
Bhagwan told me that in the early stages a person who was regularly meditating would usually at first go into a trance which would probably last for some 30 minutes and if he continued with his tapas properly such samadhi would become more frequent so carried away by it would be the that he would be able to think of nothing but sleeping away to some quiet corner to meditate undisturbed he would lose all interest in everything else until that time when he becomes established in the self and no more meditation was necessary he had then attained sahaja samadhi or his natural state but there were no fixed rules some might attain this state quietly and unrecognized without even the necessity of the process of meditation in nirvikalpa samadhi one has attained to a state where the identity has been lost and sunk entirely in the highest self however long it may last it is only temporary one must return eventually to one's normal state of consciousness one is unable to function in this state and so long as it lasts one is in a state of trance it is usually preliminary to the final state but bhagwan attained sahaja samadhi directly without any intermediate state many people consider that nirvikalpa samadhi is final and once having attained it seek to progress no further sahaja samadhi is the final and most blessed state the goal of all yogis in this state the individual has become completely merged in the supreme self his identity which became lost in nirvikalpa samadhi has become enlarged and is now the supreme self and knows itself as such trance is longer necessary a person can still carry on with the ordinary day to day business but he no identifies himself with the activities but watches them like a dreamer watching a dream there more to do and no more to be attained this is the supreme state of absolute bliss but in the words of bhagwan it is the self and it can be realized by one and all by self inquiry if there are breaks in your self awareness it means that you are not a gyani enlightened sage yet before one becomes established in the self without any breaks without any changes one has to contact and enjoy the self many times by steady meditation and the continued practice of self inquiry <coughs> one will finally become permanently established in the self without any breaks kevalle nirvikalpa samadhi compared with sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi in kevalla nirvikalpa there is the mental bucket still in existence under the water which can be pulled out at any moment sahaja is like the river that has linked up with ocean from which there is no return nirvikalpa is chit effortless formless consciousness where does the terror come that some people feel towards it and where is the mystery in being oneself to some people whose minds have become ripe from a long practice in the past 
nirvikalpa comes suddenly as a flood but to others it comes in the course of their sadhana which slowly wears down the obstructing thoughts and reveals the screen of pure awareness i i further practice renders the screen permanently exposed this is self realization mukti or sadha samadhi the natural effortless state nirvikalpas the internal and the external in the former the mind completely merges in the inmost being and is all aware of nothing else this is compared to a lamp protected from wind but in the latter although the mind is absorbed in the self the sense of the world still prevails without a reaction from within and has the calm vastness of a waveless ocean in both the self is realized in its nakedness and the essence of bliss experienced when the waveless ocean of the external and the steady flame of the internal nirvikalpa are realized as identical the ultimate goal the sadha nirvikalpa samadhi is said to have been reached nirvikalpa is effortless whereas sevikalpa is attained with effort abiding permanently in any of these samadhis either sevikalpa or nirvikalpa is sahaja what is body consciousness it is the insentient body plus consciousness both these must lie in another consciousness which is absolute and unaffected and ever abiding with or without the body consciousness what does it the matter whether the body consciousness is lost or retained provided one is holding on to that pure consciousness total absence of body consciousness has the advantage of making the samadhi more intense although it makes no difference in the knowledge of the supreme holding on to the supreme state is samadhi when it is with effort due to mental disturbances it is sevikalpa when these disturbances are absent it is nirvikalpa remaining permanently in the primal state without effort is sahaja like nirvikalpa there is an internal as well as an external sevikalpa depending on whether the disturbing thoughts are from outside or from inside in kevala nirvikalpa samadhi the mind lies immersed in the light of the self whereas the same mind lies in the darkness of ignorance in deep sleep and the subject makes a distinction between samadhi and activity after waking up from samadhi moreover activity of the body of the sight of the vital forces and of the mind and the cognizance of objects all these are obstructions from one who seeks to realize kevala nirvikalpa samadhi in sahaja samadhi however the mind has resolved into the self and has been lost the differences and obstructions mentioned above do not therefore exist here the activities of such a being are like the feeding of a somnolent body perceptible to the onlooker but not to the subject the traveler 
sleeping in the moving cart is not aware of the motion of the cart because his mind is sunk in darkness whereas the sahaja gyani remains unaware of his bodily activities because his mind is dead having been resolved into the ecstasy of chidananda bliss of the self the distinction between sleep kevala nirvikalpa samadhi and sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi can be clearly put in a tabular form as given by sri bhagwan sleep number 1 mind alive kevala nirvikalpa number 1 mind alive सहजा निर्विकल्पा समाधि नंबर वन माइंड डेड अंडर स्लीप नंबर टू पॉइंट संक इन ओब्लिवियन केवला संक इन लाइट सहजा रिजॉल्व इन टू द सेल्फ थ्री केवला निर्विकल्पा लाइक ए बकेट tied to a rope and left lying in the water of the well sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi third like a river discharged into the ocean and its identity lost fourth kevala nirvikalpa fourth point to be drawn out by the other end of the rope sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi fourth point a river cannot be redirected from the ocean the mind of the sage who has realized the self is wholly destroyed it is dead but to the onlooker he may seem to possess a mind just like the layman hence the i in the sage has merely an apparent objective reality in fact however it has neither a subjective existence nor an objective reality number 1 holding on to the reality is samadhi number 2 holding on to reality with effort is sahaja kalpa samadhi number 3 merging in a reality and remaining unaware of the world is nirvikalpa samadhi number 4 merging in ignorance and remaining unaware of the world is sleep head bands but not in samadhi fifth remaining in the primal pure natural state without effort is sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi they can be further subdivided thus sahvikalpa samadhi by a external antar internal by a external the mind jumps from one object to another antar the mind is afflicted by kama krodha etc nirvikalpa swati by a that is external merging in the one reality underlying all the phenomenon antar merging in the inmost being which is the one reality giving rise to all thoughts etc it and this uh, by a sevikalpa samadhi it it steady fixed on where from the steady fixed on the reality behind them antar where from they arise and how they have their being hold on to their source nirvikalpa samadhi by a phenomena and remaining unaware of the transitory manifestations nirvikalpa samadhi antar giving rise to all thoughts etc and remaining unaware of anything there are the 
external phenomena which are said to have their origin from the single reality search for it and hold on to antar sabikalpa there are all manner of thoughts which rise up from the reality within and manifest themselves hold, hold on to that reality nirvikalpa samadhi nir, says a nirvikalpa by a this state is compared to the waveless ocean whose waters are still and placid in internal nirvikalpa internal this state is compared to a flame unagitated by currents of air but burning quite steady all these four kinds of sevikalpa samadhi are attended with effort when these kind when these kinds of nirvikalpa samadhi are not attended with the effort and it is realized that the waveless ocean of external samadhi and the steady flame of internal samadhi are identical the state is said to be sahaja nirvikalpa samadhi self inquiry versus other means of quieting the mind in the afternoon khana's wife appealed to bhagwan in writing i am not learned in the scriptures and i find the method of self inquiry too hard for me i am a woman with seven children and a lot of household cares and it leaves me little time for meditation i request bhagwan to give me some simpler and easier method bhagwan no learning or knowledge of scriptures is necessary to know the self as no man requires a mirror to see himself all knowledge is required only to be given up eventually as not self nor is household work or cares with children necessary cares with children necessarily an obstacle if you can do nothing more at least continue saying i i to yourself mentally and all the time as advised in who am i whatever work you may be doing and whether you are sitting standing or walking bhagwan there are only two ways to conquer destiny or be independent of it one is to enquire for whom is this destiny and discover that only the ego is bound by destiny and not the self and that the ego is non existent the other way is to kill the ego by completely surrendering it to the lord by realizing one's helplessness and saying all the time not i but thou o lord and giving up all sense of i and mine and leaving it to the lord to do what he likes with you surrender can never be regarded as complete so long as the devotee wants this or that from the lord true surrender is love of god for the sake of love and nothing else not even for the sake of salvation in other words complete effacement of the ego is necessary to conquer destiny whether you achieve this effacement through self inquiry or through bhakti marga meditation is possible only if the ego is retained there is the ego and the object meditated upon this method is indirect however if we seek the ego source the ego disappears and what remains is the self this method is the direct one other than inquiry there are no adequate means if through other means it is sought to control the mind the mind will appear to be controlled but will again go forth through the control of breath also the mind will become quiescent but it will be quiescent only so long as the 
breath remains controlled and when the breath resumes the mind also will again start moving and will wander as impelled by residual impressions the source is the same for both mind and breath thought indeed is the nature of the mind the thought i is the first thought of the mind and that is egoity it is from that whence egoity originates that breath also originates there for when the mind becomes quiescent the breath is controlled and when the breath is controlled the mind becomes quiescent <laughs> breath is the gross form of mind till the time of death the mind keeps breath in the body and when the body dies the mind takes the breath along with it therefore the exercise of breath control is only an aid for rendering the mind quiescent mano nigraha it will not destroy the mind mano nasha all disciplines such as sacrifice charity austerity observance of vows japa yoga and puja are in effect modes of meditation of the form i am brahma so in all the modes of disciplines one should see to it that one does not stray away from the thought i am brahma this is the purport of this worship of the attribute less like the practice of breath control meditation on the forms of god repetition of mantras restriction on food etc but aids for rendering the mind quiescent through meditation on the forms of god and through repetition of mantras the mind becomes one pointed the mind will always be wandering just as when a chain is given to an elephant to hold in its trunk it will go along grasping the chain and nothing else so also when the mind is occupied with a name of form it will grasp that alone when the mind expands in the form of countless thoughts each thought becomes weak but thoughts get resolved the mind becomes one pointed and strong for such a mind self inquiry will become easy to make the rebellious mind calm and tranquil either see its source so that it may disappear or surrender yourself to that it may be struck down self surrender is the same as self knowledge and either of them necessarily implies self control the ego submits only when it recognizes the higher power there is no mind to control if the self is realized the self shines forth when the mind vanishes in the realized man the mind may be active or inactive the self alone exists for the mind body and world are not separate from the self can they be other than the self when a, when aware of the self why should one worry about these shadows how do they affect the self if the enquiry is made whether mind exist it will be found that mind does not exist that is control of mind otherwise if the mind is taken to exist and when seeks to control it it amounts to mind controlling the mind just like a thief turning out to be a policeman to catch the thief that is himself mind persists in that way alone but eludes itself breath control is the means for mind control breath can be controlled either by absolute retention of breath kavala kumbhaka or by regulation of breath pranayama hat yoga is one of the aids to liberation note that it is always necessary it depends upon the person vichara surpasses pranayama in yoga vasishta chudala advises investigation vichara to shekhi dabja for killing the ego reality can be reached by holding on to prana or intellect hat yoga is the former vichara is the latter there is no doubt that breath control is the means for mind control because the mind like breath is a part of air because the nature of mobility is common to both because the place of origin is the same for both and because when one of them is controlled the other gets controlled ramana 
एब्सोल्यूट रिटेंशन ऑफ ब्रेथ केवला कुंभका इज मेकिंग द वाइटल एयर स्ट्रे फ्रेमली इन द हार्ट इवन विदाउट एग्जालेशन एंड इनहलेशन दिस इज अचीव थ्रू मेडिटेशन ऑन द वाइटल प्रिंसिपल एटसेट्रा रेवल्यूशन ऑफ ब्रेथ इज मेकिंग द वाइटल एयर स्ट्रे फ्रमली इन द हार्ट थ्रू एग्जालेशन इनहलेशन एंड रिटेंशन अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंस्ट्रक्शन गिवन इन द योगा टेक्स्ट सो आई कंप्लीट this video here and next video will start with question answer thank you for watching this video please like comment and share the video and subscribe the channel thanks a lot namaskar my dear friend